everyone. Today we're going to continue our discussion on significant figures. So specifically, we're going to focus on calculations and how to determine how many sig figs your answer has. Now, in chemistry, we make a lot of different uh, measurements and sometimes we have super accurate instrumentation and sometimes we have not so accurate instrumentation. So when we're doing calculations, we always want to take into account how accurate our measurements are. So for instance, if let's say you're measuring the sides of a rectangle, uh, so maybe we have side A and side B. And let's say we have a super accurate ruler for side B and a not so accurate ruler for side A. Now, I'm not sure why you wouldn't just use the more accurate ruler, but you know, let's, let's say just for, for the sake of the example that we're using two different rulers. So let's say side A is measured as 1.2 inches. And let's say side B is measured as 3.124 inches. So side B is more accurate. We have a pretty good idea of the length of that side. Um, but side A, we're not quite as accurate. We're, we only estimated to the tenths place um, versus side B, where we estimated to the thousandths place. So we would want to take that into account if we were trying to determine the area of this rectangle. So remember, area will equal A times B, so the two sides multiplied by each other. Now, side A is less accurate, so our final answer should reflect the fact that we weren't very accurate in that measurement. So we can never be as uh, or more accurate than our least accurate measurement. So we're always limited by instrumentation that isn't very accurate. And, and we'll see some examples if that doesn't quite make sense. Now, before we start uh, with our calculations, uh, I wanted to just review rules for rounding. Um, this can get a little tricky with sig figs, so I, I just wanted to go over this a little bit. So uh, if the first digit that we're dropping from a number is four or less, then all of those numbers are dropped and we just keep our values the same as they were before. But let's say the first digit that we're dropping is five or greater. Then the last digit we're keeping is going to round up by one. So for example, Let's say we have the value 8.4234. And, you know, let's say we need to round that to three significant figures to reflect the accuracy of our measurements. Um, so the eight, the four, and the two, we're going to keep. Those are our first three sig figs. So that means we're going to drop the three and the four. Now, the first digit there, the three, is four or less. So that means we don't have to change the number. We're just going to keep it as 8.42. Now, what if we were rounding that to two sig figs? Again, to reflect the accuracy of our measurements. Then we're going to drop the two, the three, and the four. And because that first digit, the two, is less uh, than five, or four or less, we're just going to keep our values the same and we have 8.4. Now in the next example, we have 14.780. Now if we're trying to limit that to three sig figs, uh, the one, the four, and the seven are our first three sig figs. So we're going to keep those and we're going to drop the eight and the zero. Now, this time, the first digit we're dropping is an 8, which is greater than 5. So that means we have to round the first digit we're keeping up. So we're going to turn that 7 into an 8. So then our final answer will be 14.8. 
Now, if we're limiting this value to two sig figs, then that means we're dropping the seven, the eight, and the zero because the one and the four are our first two sig figs. And because the first digit we're dropping is a seven, which is greater than five, that means we need to round up. So we're gonna round the four up to five. So our final value will be 15. Now, this last example is a little tricky. So let's say we have 3,256 and we want to round that to three sig figs. So we're going to keep the three, the two, and the five, and we're going to drop the six. So because the six is five or greater, that means we have to round the five up by one. So this is going to become three, two, six, but if we just leave it like that, then we assume we have 326 instead of 3,260. So what we're going to do is add a placeholder zero at the end. Because we still want the three to be in the thousands place, the two to be in the hundreds place, and the six to be in the tens place. Now, uh, we could also write that in scientific notation so we could write this as 3.26 times 10 to the third. So that shows us we have three sig figs and that we also still have a thousand or 3000 in our value. Now, what if we want to limit this to two sig figs? So let's say we're just keeping those first two digits and we're getting rid of the five and the six. That five is five or greater, so we're going to round up the two to three. But again, we don't wanna just keep this as 33 because that doesn't reflect what we measured or calculated. Um, so we're going to put a couple of placeholder zeros so that the first three is still in the thousands place and the second three is still in the hundreds place. And again, you can always write that in scientific notation, which would be 3.3 times 10 to the third. Okay, so there are a couple of tricky situations that can come up when you're rounding. Um, so now that we've gone over that example, let's do a learning check. Let's write the correct value when 3.1457 grams is rounded to each of the following. So in A, we're going to round that to three sig figs, and in B, we're going to round it to two sig figs. So feel free to pause the video and try this on your own. Um, and when you unpause, we'll go over it together. Okay, so let's go over part A. So I'm just going to rewrite our original value. And we want to have a value with only three sig figs. So we're going to keep the first three digits and we're going to drop the five and the seven. Now the first digit we're dropping is a five. So that means we want to round the four up. So our final value will be 3.1 Okay, so now what about B? What if we're limiting our original value to just two sig figs? So that would be the three and the one. We're going to keep those and we're going to get rid of four, five, and seven. So the first digit we're dropping is a four, which is less than five. So we're just going to keep our value the way it is. We're not going to round up. So our final answer is 3.1. Okay, so now that we've reviewed rounding, let's talk about calculations. So we'll start with multiplication and division. Now there are different rules in terms of sig figs for 
multiplication and division versus addition and subtraction. And remember, we're going to just deal with measured numbers here because exact numbers have an unlimited number of sig figs. So we don't really count those when we're figuring out our final answer in terms of significant figures. All right, so for multiplication and division, the final answer is written so that it has the same number of significant figures as the measurement with the fewest significant figures. So remember earlier I mentioned that we cannot be more accurate than our least accurate measurement. So when we're multiplying and dividing numbers uh, that we've measured, we want to take into account what is our least accurate measurement, and that's going to determine the sig figs in our answer. So for example, let's say we were measuring uh, two sides of a square, and the first side, or a rectangle I guess in this case, uh, so the first side measured 24.66 centimeters, and the second side is 0.35 centimeters. Okay, so how many sig figs are in 24.66? So those are all non-zero digits. So it would be four sig figs. And what about our second measurement, 0 0.35? How many sig figs are in that value? So remember, if you have a leading zero, that is a placeholder. So it's not significant. So that means in 0 0.35, we only have two sig figs, the three and the five. Now, that means that 0 0.35 is going to limit how many sig figs we have in our answer. So if we plug this uh, multiplication into our calculator, we're going to get 8.631. But that doesn't reflect our least accurate measurement. Um, so it has four digits, which is too many. So we're going to drop the three and the one so that we only have two sig figs in our answer. And because that first digit we're dropping is a three, that means our final answer is 8.6. Also, we're multiplying those units together, so our final unit will be centimeters squared. Okay, so just remember, multiplication and division, we want our final answer to have the same number of sig figs as our measured value with the fewest sig figs. So let's go through another example. Let's say that we're multiplying 21.5 centimeters by 0 0.30 centimeters, and then we're dividing by 1.88 centimeters. So the same rules apply as before. We're going to figure out how many sig figs each value has, and then our final answer will have the fewest sig figs. So uh, if we look at 21.5, that has three sig figs. Everything is a non-zero digit. And then 0 0.30 has two sig figs. So remember that first zero is a placeholder, so it is not significant, but the second zero comes after a non-zero digit and a decimal, so that is significant. And then in the last value, 1.88, again, we have all non-zero digits there, so that will give us three sig figs. So the least number of sig figs was two, that is our least accurate measurement. So our final answer should also have two sig figs. Now, if we plug this all into our calculator, we're going to get way too many digits. You can see there's, uh, yeah, we're getting down to like the billionths place there. <laughs> so we've got 3.43085163. Far too many sig figs there. 
Um, so we're going to chop off everything past our second sig fig. So the first digit we're dropping is a three. So we're just going to keep the value as 3.4. So again, we just have two sig figs there. Okay. Now, sometimes when we do multiplication or division problems, um, especially in a calculator, your calculator doesn't take sig figs into account. So, for instance, let's say that we are dividing um, 6.0 grams by 2.00 grams. So, 6.0 has two sig figs. And then 2.00 has three sig figs. And my uh, text got off a little bit there. But when you plug that into a calculator, your calculator just gives you a value of three. So that only has one sig fig, but we know that we can have two sig figs because that's our least, our smallest number of sig figs. So what we're going to do to reflect our number of sig figs is put in a zero. So our final answer would be 3.0 grams. And remember that zero is after a decimal and after a non-zero digit. So it is significant. And again, our answers should reflect how accurate our measurements are. So while our least accurate measurement here had two sig figs, we don't want to express our answer with only one digit because that's not reflecting how accurate our measurements are. So we do want at least two sig figs there. All right, so again, sometimes you have to add zeros in uh, to make sure you have the right number of sig figs. Okay, so let's do a practice problem. Uh, we're going to do the following calculation and figure out the number of sig figs in our final answer. So we have 5.00 times 3.408, and we're going to divide that by 2.0. So again, feel free to pause the video and plug this into your calculator, and then figure out how many sig figs you should have. Okay, so let's go over this together. Um, first, let's go through and figure out how many sig figs each of our different values have. That will help us determine how many sig figs our answer should have. So how many sig figs does 5.00 have? Okay, so we've got a five, so that's a non-zero digit. That's definitely significant. What about those two zeros? Are those significant? Yes, they come after a decimal and a non-zero digit. So we have a total of three sig figs here. What about 3.408? How many sig figs does that value have? Four. So the three, the four, and the eight are all non-zero digits. They're significant. And then that zero is in between two non-zero digits. So that's also significant. So this has a total of four sig figs. And then what about 2.0? How many sig figs does that have? Two. So the two is a non-zero digit. And then the zero, again, comes after a decimal and a non-zero digit. So that has two sig figs. Oh, my pen decided to stop working. Let's see. There we go. All right, so how many sig figs should our answer have? Two, right? We want our answer to reflect our least accurate measurement and that's the 2.0. Okay, so let's plug this into our calculators if you haven't already. I'm just gonna plug mine in right now. So I've got five times 3.408 
divided by 2. And I'm not bothering with the point zeros in my calculator because, again, calculators, they don't keep track of sig figs. So. All right, so I got 8.52. Uh, and then our unit would be, let's see, centimeters. And we just said that we want to limit our answer to two sig figs. So let's get rid of this two. And since it's less than five, I don't have to round. So this will just be 8.5. Okay, so let's see if I did it right. <laughs> Yay, we did it right, okay. Now what about addition and subtraction? So there are different rules for addition and subtraction. So in addition or subtraction, the final answer is written so that it has the same number of decimal places as the measurement with the fewest decimal places. Okay. So let's say we're adding together 2.012, 61.09, and 3.0. So what we can do here is kind of figure out, okay, our first value uh, has or ends in the thousandths place. Our second value ends in the hundredths place, and our third value ends in the tenths place. So we're going to limit our final answer to the tenths place. Now what I like to do is set up addition problems like I did here where all the decimals are lined up, all the place values are lined up, and then I kind of chop off anything past the smallest decimal place. So we do get a um, initial answer of 66.102, but we want to limit ourselves to the tenth place or the tenths place. So our final answer will be 66.1. So again, this is very similar to what we were talking about before. We're just limiting um, the sig figs in our answer to the uh, fewest decimal places. So before with multiplication and division, we were concerned with the number of sig figs. But with addition and subtraction, we're concerned with the number of decimal places. All right, so let's say we're doing a subtraction problem. So let's say uh, we're subtracting 3.0 from 65.09. So our first value here ends in the hundredths place and our second value ends in the tenths place. So again, I can draw a little line all the way down and cut off the digits past the tenths place, which is what we want to limit our answer to. So initially we get 62.09 and we're going to chop off the nine, but because it's greater than five, uh, we're going to round up the zero to one. So we end up with 62.1 as our final answer. Okay, so let's do a practice problem. Let's add the following measured numbers. So we have 82.409 milligrams and 22.0 milligrams. And unfortunately, my text got off center a little bit, so the decimals aren't quite lined up. But feel free to uh, rewrite that so the decimals are lined up. And then uh, if you want to pause the video and solve for the problem first, uh, feel free. Okay. So what place value does the first number end at? So what, what place value does this 9 have? So that's in the thousandths place. So we've got tens, ones, 
tenths, hundredths, thousandths. And what about the zero in 22.0? Which place value does that have? So that's in the tenths place. Okay, so we're going to limit our final answer to the tenths place. All right, so let's do some addition here. We can even do this without a calculator, right? So nine, and then we have um, zero, and then four point, and then we've got four and 10. Okay, so initially our answer is 104.409. But again, we wanna limit it to the tenths place. So that means we're chopping off the zero and the nine. And the first digit we're dropping is a zero, which is less than five. So we're going to leave our answer as 104.4. And then our unit is milligrams. And we'll talk more about units later. So don't worry if you're not sure what that is. Okay, let's see if we did it right. Yay, we did it right. Okay, so let's go over a summary of sig figs. Okay, so we'll just kind of put some key bullets here or bullet points. So the first bullet point is that sig figs are non zero digits. So for instance, one, two, three, etc. And then uh, sig figs are zeros in between non zero digits. Sig figs are zeros after a non zero digit and a decimal point. Okay, and then for multiplication and division. The final answer should reflect the measured value with the least number of sig figs. And then for addition and subtraction, the final answer should reflect the least decimal places. Okay, so that's kind of our little summary. Um, you can also add your own summary points if you would like. So if there were some other key things that you wanted to write down, uh, feel free. Um, so I think we'll stop there today. And I believe next time we'll wrap up chapter two. Um, so I will see you then. And of course, always let me know if you have any questions.